Hello everyone, Sikto here, going to talk about Platinum. Before I say anything else, quick disclaimer. If you're here expecting a video like, use this tactic to get a thousand Platinum in two hours, or expecting me to tell you to go to Node X, farm item Y, and sell it for Z price, you might want to click off this video. In this video, I will help you decide which item is right for you to farm, and where to invest your time. And all the prices mentioned in this video are just as examples, and may not be accurate by the time you're watching this video. I've been waiting till 100 subs to make this video to thank all of you for supporting me. So thank you. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start. First off, let's see how Platinum Economy actually works. When you start the game, you will be given 50 Platinum. These count as free Platinum and cannot be traded. They can only be used to purchase in-game items. Then we have purchased Platinum, which is purchased by real money. So what happens is, people buy Platinum and among other things, they use it to buy stuff from other players. That is where the cycle starts. In Warframe, there is a lot of Platinum in circulation. And that's where you come in. By providing desired items, you get yourself some Plat. This desired item can be a lot of things and some are less profitable than others. In this guide, I want to tell you some of the tactics that I personally tested and used to get flat, and I'll tell you some tips that will make sure you are not wasting your time on an item that has no buyers. There are a lot of factors playing into price of an item, including some harder to see than others, but there are few factors that directly and strongly affect the prices. Some of these factors are how old the item is, how hard is it to get, and how desired it is. First, let's talk about how age affects prices. When a new item is introduced, say a new Prime Warframe for example, it has a high demand and not much supply, and that is when it's going to be expensive. Let's have a look at these approximate average numbers. The very first day Vara Prime was released, after 6 hours, its price was around 300 Platinum per set. After the first day was finished, price was about 250. After 3 days, it was about 200 and after 2 weeks it went down to 150. And by the time of recording this, over 100 days has passed and the average price is about 70 plat. So basically, the more you wait till you get the new item for sale, the cheaper it gets and the less value you will get out of your time. Now let's talk about the farm difficulty. The more time it takes to farm an item, the less people will have it and thus the more expensive it will be. For example, if you have a look at Evara Prime right now, you will notice that common and uncommon parts in Lith and Miso are under 5 plat, while Rare of Neo is about 20 plat and Uncommon of Axie is about 25 plat. That sums up to 55 plat and set is about 70 plat. So you shouldn't waste your time on getting Evara Blueprint or Neuroptics and should focus on the chassis and systems. Now let's talk about how desire affects the item price. A lot of factors affect this one ranging from how good prime model looks, how good frame kit is, and if it's recently changed or not. Let's look at an example. Saren prime set compared to Valkyr prime set, which were unvaulted together last October. Saren prime set averages 150 plat and Valkyr prime set averages 100 plat at the time of this recording. Because Saren in general is a very desired frame while Valkyr not so much and is pretty much outclassed. With these factors combined, you should notice farming something like Chroma rare part from Lith is not worth your time, but farming something like Titania Prime uncommon from Axie or Neo rare part right now is very profitable. So should you sell sets or should you sell parts? If you're checking this video, you very likely don't have backup lag and can't risk anything, but if you have it at some point, then check prices as sometimes farming the rare part and buying cheap parts for a set sale is very profitable. Though you should be careful as you risk not being able to sell it for as much as you invested and bleed flat if it takes too long. So you should be careful and consider your risk. If you just want some quick and risk free plat, just go for parts. Now let's talk about ribbons because they seem to intimidate a lot of people. Stuff I already said apply to ribbons as if the weapon is new or desired, its ribbon will be more expensive. But here another factor comes into play, and that is popularity. Even if your weapon has one of highest damage outputs in game, if people are not using it, it won't be desired. Like Synapse, that has one of the highest DPSs in automatic category, but its ribbons are dirt cheap. So should you roll your ribbons or should you just sell them on roll? Ribbons generally sell for more unrolled than bad rolled, 
So unless you want to really invest into it and already for about 30 to 50 rolls on average to get a decent roll, I wouldn't suggest it. How I like to do it is I pick up a weapon that I like, is strong and has at least a decent amount of popularity like Cybris and buy a ribbon for it or pick a weapon that I have a ribbon for and fit the description and then roll it till it's good enough to sell and then put it into my cell over there for trade chat or open an auction for it in Warframe market. Though beware, this process takes months on end and is not a short term investment. If you don't have at least 300 plat in your account or are not Master Rank 16 yet, I do not suggest this route. Just a quick side note, do not touch the ribbons that you know will turn out to be a 1 out of 5 disposition in no time. Like Brahma, try and go for a ribbon that is popular enough to have buyers and not too popular to be nerfed to oblivion in future. Now let's talk about how you find your buyers. First, let me tell you that there are different types of buyers. We have the typical I have no plat buyer, which will sacrifice time to get a lower price. And then we have average buyer, which has a balance going on and it feels like the part is rare enough, might go a bit higher to find it faster. And then we have the rich ones. They don't care if they're paying twice or thrice for something. They just want it now. No waiting. They especially can be seen after updates in trade chat and when nothing interesting is happening at the moment, they're usually not in the game. I personally trade with all three kinds obviously. I put some items for sale at warframe.market site and I definitely check both the site and the app even though they're supposed to be synced but they're not. So I will sell my items wherever they go for hire. And then we have trade chat. Just copy and paste your usual ribbon sales and it will be fine. Every now and then have a quick look. You could catch someone wanting a syndicate augment you could provide as not everyone pays attention to those. Pro tip, if you set PMO, please make offer, on a ribbon that is not literally the hottest ribbon in game, then you're wasting your time. You should have prices and don't be greedy. For getting an idea on how to price stuff, I suggest Samlar.com for ribbons. Check the latest prices and decide how much you want to sell it for. As for Warframe.market, if you're going to sell something there, say on the site, you don't have to offer lower than everyone else to get your item sold. You just have to put it in the same area. Even sometimes, slightly higher can work, as in different times, some of them will be offline and you will end up offering the cheapest price. Or they all get sold and then it will reach your turn. If it took too long, then just reduce your price a little bit. Even though I talked about prime items in bits already, there are a few things that I should still mention. When a new prime item is released, it will be expensive and get cheaper as time passes, until it gets vaulted. Then its prices will start to rise. Say Necros Prime is unvaulted. You grab a set or better farm rare parts and buy cheap parts to have a set. Then you keep them because they're gonna be dirt cheap. You keep them on you until this unvaulting ends and the next one ends as well then you're gonna sell them. This way, you bought cheap and sold for a lot higher. This is a mid to long term investment. Long term view surely provides a lot more. There's also a trade route that consists of no farming. When the item is cheap, which is at end of unvaulting, buy few sets and then after next unvaulting ends start selling them and you will rack quite a profit same thing can be done short term as well buy an underpriced evara prime set on release day and sell it for 50 plat higher immediately do this few times and over three days you got 300 plat with no effort i combined all of my tactics in evara prime release including farming rare parts buying common parts for sets and buying sets and parts cheap and selling higher and over the course of three days by trading about 10 parts five sets and two unrolled bazaar ribbons that i have snatched before update i got a total profit of just under 2000 platinum but could i do this if i didn't already have over 1.5k in my account probably not as i wouldn't have risked that much you might ask how much time it took you in those three days and the answer is about 15 hours each day I worked hard three days to get the profit that would take me six months to get other way. Try and always catch new prime releases as they're really good sources of plat. Same goes for any other new tradable item. 
I hope this guide has been helpful. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comment section below. And as you're there, tell me what tactics did you use to get plat. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day and bye-bye.